switch over to the lapel mic. Always got to remind yourself this does not go in your eyeball. All right. Am I on and can you hear me? All right. Good morning. Good morning. I hope you are excited because there is a new year. This is one of the things that I'm really excited about because it is 2020. 2019 is no longer here. Uh, this, I put a meme on Facebook recently that says, you know what? I don't know what's going to happen because I don't, well, I don't remember how like, it went now. It's not in my notes. That's why I put it in my notes. But anyway, there's something about I don't have 2020 vision. So you can make all kinds of 2020 vision jokes this, this year. But if you go on Facebook and see my page, you can see my little meme I put on there. I, I was so excited when I saw it. And it. Anyways, done with that. So it's 2020, and this morning's sermon title is called The Wise and the Foolish. And I got a picture I want to show you. And I got a picture I'm going to show you. Go to the next slide. Can anyone tell me what they see in this picture? A what? Mining? Sand? Backhoe, yeah? Swimming pool? Huh? Oh. Are, you, are you ready for this? This is really exciting. I did not know this had happened. This, in 2014, what you are seeing right now is that is a Walmart parking lot. That was a sinkhole that started out at three feet wide, not very deep. That is on the side parking lot, and that is in the same location that when I was between the ages of five and the 12, somewhere around there, that is where my dad used to park at all the time, in Flo <laughs> Chief in Florida. Yeah. By the time they went in there to kind of see how that sinkhole, how big it was, it started out three feet, right? It was 50 foot wide, 60 feet deep. Right be 60 feet deep, right beside the Walmart. We're talking about, it's on, like, you know how like Walmart's have that side parking lot? It's right along there on one of the Walmarts down in Chiefland, Florida. That's interesting. All right. Let's go to the next one. How do you think that sandcastle is going to hold up to that water? Probably not at all. That's exactly what it is. I was going to show you all a video, and it was really cute. This puppy was digging a hole, and then the water, the tide came in and started washing out his little hole, and the puppy got really mad and started barking at the water. But we cannot handle that much cuteness on a Sunday morning and get through this. So I, I settled with that. I bring this up because in Matthew chapter 7, if you take your Bibles and turn there with me this morning, in Matthew chapter 7, there's a passage called The Wise and Foolish Builders. It's kind of what it's always subtitled. And we're going to start reading in verse 24. So Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 24. Therefore, Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. Those pictures make a lot more sense now, don't they? Where we're going this morning. And we're going to go ahead and start. And the first part of this passage that I want to look at is it says, it talks about these words. It goes, therefore, everyone who hears these words, what are the words that Matthew is referring to you? Well, if you go back to Matthew chapter 5, and I encourage you, and I really, really do encourage you 
to this week on uh, the following weeks to go back to Matthew chapter 5 and read it all up to Matthew chapter 8. If you go there, this Matthew, Matthew 5, 6, and 7 is what we call the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus goes up on the mount, kind of goes up on the mountainside. He sits down, his disciples come up, and one of the greatest debates in the seminar, in the academic world, is did the crowds follow or not? And I don't know. But what I do know is his disciples were there, and that we do know for sure. And he sits down and he goes, this is how you walk the Christian way. It's kind of like, you want to know what it means to walk and live for Christ? Here are some teachings on that matter. As we go into 2020, I would, I, I would impart upon you and encourage each and every single one of us to review what it means to follow Christ. I think that would be a great Devo time for each and every single one of us and for the next few weeks. Anyways, this passage is the end of the Sermon on the Mount. And, yeah. Here's what I want to say about this passage that I think is very, very important. And I think it's something that this morning I really hope that it strikes our heart. Is I want to go to this next slide. And it says, the foundation matters. See, so many times the, so many times the, the, so many times I think we get worried about the building itself. Have you ever got excited about a work project? If you don't know, if you don't know, I'm really excited. I have a really big project lined up for me, kind of a work project lined up for me starting whenever I get some extra time. Is I'm rebuild, I have a product, I'm rebuilding the boat. When I say boat, I mean the floor. I'm rewiring everything and putting a new gas tank and all kinds of crazy stuff to it. And it is a problem. I am so excited about that. And, and it gets to the point where some people are tired of hearing me talk about it. And, and sometimes we get so busy worried about the building materials and what it's going to look like. And I want you to think about this. We're so worried about the house looking pretty, the house being dressed up. We want, we want our neighbors to come in and they feel welcome and it's cozy and the, the color scheme. I've never understood color scheme. You could probably tell by how I dress. <laughs> Everything we're worried about. But you know what I wonder? Are we worried about the foundation on which the house is built upon? Uh, and I'm talking about, let's, go to that, let's apply that in spiritual terms. We're so worried about looking the part, looking the Christian part, acting the Christian part, saying, learning the language, all this stuff. We're so worried about all the things that go around Christianity that sometimes I feel that we're not too worried about the foundation in which we're building our lives upon. Matthew comes in here and he says, the wise builder builds on the rock. Go ahead and go to the next slide. It says the wise builder. Go ahead and go to the next one. The wise builder is the one who not only hears, sees, or talks the gospel, but does learn and lives out the gospel in such a way that the gospel becomes our very nature. I want you to think about this for a moment. The, the, gospel, message, the, the gospel message is something that transforms us from the inside out. It's that you can't, listen to this, you can't really... Fully walk the Christian walk without first having set that foundation. And you're like, what does that mean? Because what if I told you Christianity is more about doing good or being good? It's about having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That that's the starting point. Is that is that everything everything happens because because you're like, well, why why, why is that a big deal? Well, let, let's go here for a minute. Let's go to the foolish builder. Go ahead and go to the next slide. The foolish builder. All right, go ahead and hit the next one. I don't know why I didn't subtitle that on the same slide. But anyways, the foolish builder is the one who only hears, sees, and talks the gospel, but refuses to put the gospel into practice. There's someone who doesn't set the foundation. They might try, they might look, they might try to convince, but they don't really live it out in their lives. Who 
here's what happens. When we talk about the wise and foolish builders, here's kind of what happens on this. When you build your house on the rock, the rain's coming. If you looked at the news, there's rain coming. So much, so much rain that I might want to go ahead and make sure there's gas in the boat because that might be the only way to get to the school bus. I don't know. Rain's coming. The streams rose. The sand has this thing where we saw the sand castle. We know the sand gets wiped out. We see in Florida. Florida has issues with potholes. It's a very big, it's a very big thing. Uh, when I found that one happened in the Chief and Walmart parking lot, I was actually looking up because I thought I heard one time a pothole had like ended up in the middle of a center of a Walmart or some type of business, and I couldn't find it anywhere, and I was like, I can't find it. But I shared that because it was from my Floridian hometown, so to speak. Sand, worst way, it's not very strong. In fact, if you've ever been to the beach, and <laughs> we're all thinking about the beach right now, go in there. You put your feet in there, it sinks in a little bit. You can kick it, you can dig it with your hands. It's not a very, it's not a very sturdy element. It washes away with the storms. So what do you think about this? If that's your foundation, it's no wonder why your life falls apart. Have you ever got to that place where you just feel like, man, my entire life has fallen apart and I don't know why? Do you know Christians get that same feeling? The difference is the house might come crumbling down, but the foundation is still there. Think, let that set in for a moment. The whole house will come crumbling down, but the foundation is still there. For Christians, when the storms come and the wind blows and the rain falls and lightning strikes, no matter why, their house is on the firm foundation. There's something... That holds them up. And you're like, well, what if, I, what if I haven't set that foundation? What if I've lived my entire life playing this game? What if I have grown up not really making a decision, not really setting that foundation in Christ? Well, now, did you know, according to Google and its reliableness, that you can actually pick up a house and play down a new foundation underneath of it? I did not know that. I thought that was cool. Anyway, I don't really know what that has to do with anything, but yeah, that we can set a foundation, that the new foundation, you can reset that foundation. That's the good news. That's the gospel message. It's that it's never too late to build your house on the foundation of Christ. But here's something that I want, that I want to get through with this. In, in the Christian circles, in Christianity... There have been two extremes that have confused most people, even Christians. It's there is this, there's kind of this dichotomy of Christian faith, meaning that there's two angles to this. It's kind of two sides of the same coin, so to speak. There, one says that in order to be a faithful Christian, you must be obedient. And then the other one says, well, what saves you is faith. And so there's this argument between faith and and works that are always there. And the thing is, is that they're not really an argument against each other. They're one and the same. Did you catch that? They're one and the same. Because out of our faith produces works. There is a different heart for when you do good out of faith than when you do good just because you want to look good. And people can see that. There's a difference. The good news that it's never too late to rebuild on the solid rock of Christ. This morning, and we're going to come up here, is we have something different this morning. And this morning, you know how earlier I talked about New Year's resolutions? And a lot of New Year's resolutions are like, this year, I'm going back on keto. That's one of mine. <laughs> this year, I'm going to go back to the gym. This year, I'm going to be nicer. I heard that on the radio station a lot this last week. I'm going to be nicer. I'm like, so you weren't very nice last year, apparently. All these New Year's resolutions. And you know what? There's nothing bad 
about making New Year's resolutions. I don't think there's nothing bad about bettering yourself. But I wonder, what are some of the spiritual New Year's resolutions? And guys, don't show this next slide. Don't worry about it. It's kind of corny now that I think about it. What are some of the spiritual resolutions that we can have? So here's what I've done. I went out, and I got these little crosses. And I got enough for at least everyone here to have one, maybe two. And what I would like you to do at some point is this morning that if you want to make some New Year's resolutions, is we're going to kind of have this as an active response. And I want you to come up here. And if you need, I can bring one to you. Come up here, grab one of these. Go home at some point, maybe in your Sunday school class, maybe this morning. Grab a pen or a marker or something. I want you to write, this year, I'm going to read my Bible more. This year, I'm going to be more active in church. This year, I'm going to spend more time, whatever God wants me to do. This year, I make God first. Whatever it is, I want you to make these New Year's resolutions. Put it on these crosses. Put it up somewhere. They have a thing that if you want to put it, put it something like a little necklace or bread, you can hang it up somewhere. Put it somewhere that you can see so that way when you look on the wall, that it reminds you of the commitment that you made toward Christ on this New Year's Sunday, the first New Year's Sunday that we've had together in worship. My office, a while ago, I uh, had the kids. I told them, if you want to see us do some of the youth group, let me know and write something. In my office, hanging up on the wall, there's still a piece of paper that I've left there that where our kids said, this is what we want to do. And it's still there. It's not on the wall. I should let me rephrase that. I didn't know it was just randomly put stuff on the wall. It's on a little board. But to remind us and to convict us of our need about Christ, to keep us focused on that firm foundation. Remember what we're building our life for. It's for Christ. This altar is open for you this morning. I hear the crosses right here. We can all stand. And we're going to sing our last song.